Let's pray. Our Father, we thank you at this time. Would you bless your name? Because you brought us together for a good thing. You're going to lift us up so we'll get to higher ground in our ministries in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, I pray for everyone here this morning and all the people that will still join us in our ministries, in our pastoral work, in our professional work. Oh Lord, we pray you lead us to higher ground in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, even from this very day, you set your mark upon us and we will be successful in everything you have called us to do in Jesus' name. Confirm it, O oh Lord, in every heart and every life and every family and every flock. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. You can be seated, please. God bless you. As I continue with the message, you might see some moving around and some rearrangement of things. Uh, we know about that. Just concentrate on the message. Also, well, the message is going on. You might see some people coming in, and we expect that too. Whether they come in from the front or from the back, just concentrate on the message, and the blessings of the Lord will be upon every one of us in Jesus' name. By the way, anytime I say something that requires an amen, I want ministers, amen. And you know something? God bless you. Whenever we come together like this, you need to understand there is a difference between ministers' conference and believers uh, meeting and crusade you know some of those people at the crusade field they have never been in a meeting like this and when you say praise the lord they don't know whether to say yes or amen or hallelujah or whatever I, but uh, you see when we come over here and uh, your ministers when i say something you give me an hallelujah that is for the ministers and when i say something that requires praise the lord you will speak with a preacher's voice and you praise the Lord, I will know that you are appointed, anointed ministers of God. Aha, you missed that now. I thought you will say, Amen. <laughs> God bless every one of you. Till this morning, I'm having just the introductory message. But the introduction is as good as the rest of the series too. I'm looking at Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 19. Matthew chapter 4, verse 19. And it says unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. That's where we're going to start. Here we find the Lord Jesus Christ. He came into his ministry. And as he came into the ministry, then he began to pick out people. And he picked them out so they could do a good work. Number one, an enduring work. Number two, an excellent work. Number three, an edifying work. Number four, an established work a kind of work he was calling them into and then he told them at the initial stage there is something they will have to do before he will do what he will do follow me and i will make you fishers of men as i read that verse of scripture i see two parts the first part is a command and the second part is a promise the first part is a purposeful command and the second part is a concrete promise the first part is a human part and the second part is a divine part the first part is your part it's what you have to do it says unto them follow me and then he said i will make you fishers of men when he says i'll make you fishers of men i see a promise there but i see a conditional promise there on the condition that you follow me on that condition i will make you fishers of men and look at those words again fishers of men if you remove the word of all you have left will be fisher men these were already fishermen in the natural and then he said you are fishermen in the natural now i'm going to take you up build you up mold you up I'm going to mentor you until you become, in the spiritual sense, fisherman. And if you will follow me, as I expect you to follow me, then I'm going to make you fishers of men. As I look at leadership, I see that the leadership ought to allow God to do something in them. So they will be the kind of leaders they ought to be. I look at leadership, and I see, number one, I see the lost leader. You know, there are leaders that are lost. Some are lost in the crowd. 
that you don't know you are called to be a leader and you just think you are a follower not only that other people do not even see that you are a leader i'm thinking of moses now and you know when god called moses he knew it but the people did not know they thought he was just like them and uh, when two people israelites were fighting and he wanted to separate them oh they said who do you think you are who made you a ruler a leader over us and eventually discovered that what he had done got him into trouble and everybody knew about it already he ran away the people saw him as a lost leader he saw himself as a lost leader he, he went away at the age of 40 between the age of 40 and the age of 80 that man remained a lost leader until the lord recalled him and he said i still have something for you to do you look at your life as we are here this morning if you were to spend 70 72 years in your life two thoughts of that will be 48 you already may be beyond 48 and you look back and then you thought about the dreams you had when you were much much younger the dream you had as an engineer the dream you had as a doctor the dream you had as a lawyer the dream you had as a Sunday school teacher the dream you had as a stone winner the dream you had of a great evangelist but much water has now gone under the bridge and many things really have happened and some disappointments have come your way and then you look at your age now two thoughts gone already what else can i do a lost leader but the lord will find you out and this very time as we're having the seminar together he'll put the fire back in your soul and the lord will recover you and put your feet back on the rock of ages and you will not be moved again in jesus name number number two i see latent leaders that word latent means hidden hidden leaders latent leaders have you thought about david let's think about david for a moment he was just an ordinary member of the family of the children of jesse and as uh, god sent samuel to go and find out and to go and choose a king for israel to replace saul david was a hidden leader and he was hidden in the wilderness taking care of the sheep nobody thought about him and yet he was a leader in the making i look at many of our pastors and many of our leaders even in the government even when you look at the government and they're picking out people that they think should solve a problem for us and they bypass many 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 of us i can look back in my school days when i was in the secondary school although i was i was i was all right character there was no problem even though i wasn't born again academics not too much of a problem even though i wasn't born again and yet i was a latent leader i think the only thing my classmates recognized is that i was very sharp in mathematics not only that they thought i had a good hand writing and if they wanted to write anything that in the journal in the magazine of the school and you have to write it with hand or many many articles they'll choose me apart from that they never chose me for any other thing they never chose me to be a class captain they never chose me to be a prefect they never chose me to lead in any way they thought i wasn't a leader a latent leader and maybe you are there and as you are thinking about yourself you are hidden nobody knows you even mama does not think you are going to be a great leader papa does not think you are going to be a great leader your people do not think you are going to be a great leader latent leaders and eventually when Samuel had seen all the people and then he said Eliab will be the person to choose God said no that's not the man we're still waiting for the man that we're going to use and then he said are these all your children oh he said there is one in the field and <laughs> that one who cares for that one that one that he cannot lead anything except just take care of my sheep go and call him immediately he came God said that's the man that's my man I have found a man according to my heart and even that even after that he still remained a latent leader a hidden leader because now that was chapter 16 of first samuel for samuel chapter 17 they went to the battlefield and they wanted the people to go and conquer the philistines do you know that they didn't choose david to be among them they only chose the elderly brothers of uh, of david 
and eventually papa said david come over here even though you cannot fight in the battle can you go and take food to the people who are fighting in the battle they think that's all we can do give them water to drink i give them some corn and some rice to eat they think all we can do is support all we can do is come behind the people who are real leaders recognize leaders they have gone to the field you go and support them and he said that's all right don't mind whatever you are given to do in your ministry in your church in your place of work get it done while you are doing it that thing that is hidden in you it will come out i said it will come out and nobody will bury you before you are dead in jesus name and so he did what he was told to do and he carried the food and then he got there when he got there he gave them the food but he waited don't be in a hurry wait because your time of appointment may be just today we will recognize you we will spot you out we will know you the circumstances will make you come to the top and you are coming to the top and so you saw goliath coming out he saw Goliath, he saw Saul. And when Goliath came, Saul ran away. He was shaking like this. And then all the other people to you, they were shaking, they were praying. And then he said, he went to somebody. He said, what will they do to the man that will conquer this Goliath? And then they told him. And eventually he said, I will do it. His brother came and talking about the latent leader, the hidden leader. You are not recognized yet, but heaven will recognize you. Yeah. And his brother came and said, David, what are you doing there? I know you are forward. You seem like an ex extrovert. This is not a place for boys. You have no place here. And then David said, why are you talking to me like that? Is, that, is there not a cause? Ah, there's a reason for you being here. I said there's a reason for you being here. Yeah. Why did you leave everything on the field? Even your flock, even your work, everything you are behind. Why did you come here? There is a cause. God is bringing you out. Yeah. And eventually they brought this latent leader. They brought him to Saul. And then Saul said, thank you, my boy. I appreciate your excitement. I appreciate your desire. You want to do something, but you cannot. You are too young. Latent leader. And eventually he said, I can't. I will and I must. I can. I will and I must. And so uh, Saul said, All right, if you are going to do it, by the way, we have not trained you in our army. Okay, put on this. He put it on and then he went in it. He said, Sir, I've never tried this one before. Let me use the one I have tried before. The promise of God the name of the lord and the sling that he was used to and so he took up the thing and he went to the riverside and he gathered how many pieces of stone five why five grace g-r-a-c-e five letters face f-a-i-t-h five letters with those five letters you will conquer any problem and you will conquer any goliath by the way, I don't think David was thinking of grace and faith, but I discovered in the Bible, Goliath had four other brothers. One plus four equals five. And so he was thinking, well, this is Goliath that has come out. What if I kill Goliath and his four brothers show up, the same stone that killed their brother will kill their relatives. I said the same stone that killed Goliath will kill all the brothers of Goliath. Think about it in your life. The same faith that healed you of headache, that same faith will kill you of cancer. And the same grace that gave you salvation, that same grace will give you sanctification. And the same power that solved a problem in your life, that same power will solve all the other problems in your life. The same stone that killed Goliath will kill all the other brothers of Goliath. Eventually, I'm sure you know the story, that eventually he killed Goliath. He was the latent leader. Number three, there is the limited leader. The limited leader. You see, when God called the apostles, and when Jesus called the apostles, they came to him. But you know that he took Peter, James, and John, he took them to the Mount of Transfiguration. 
And before he came back, somebody had come to them, bringing a child that was having evil spirits. And they prayed and prayed and prayed. And those people, uh, they couldn't get anywhere. They couldn't get through. That boy was not delivered. Eventually, Jesus came. And when Jesus came, the father of that boy came to him and said, I brought my son to your disciples and they could not do what I expected them to do. Why? They were limited leaders. And there are many leaders like that in, the, in, our, in our ministry. Many leaders like that in our churches. Many leaders like that in our establishments. This is what they ought to do. The need is there. The challenge is there. Although they are in position of doing it, but they are limited. Number one, the lost leader. Number two, the hidden latent leader. Number three, the limited leader. Number four, the liberated leader. And that's why we came here. The Lord will liberate us. And what you could not do before today, after this day, you'll begin to do it. The mountains you could not climb before this day, after this day, you'll begin to climb those mountains in Jesus' name. When God liberates you, he releases you into a new ministry. Before I close, I'm going to just talk about three things. Number one, the recovery of lost leaders. The recovery of lost leaders. Number two, revelation for limited leaders. Revelation for limited leaders. Number three, the release of liberated leaders. The release of liberated leaders. Let's come back now to Matthew chapter 4, verse 19. And he says unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. In verse 20, it says, And straightway they left their nets and followed him. Straightway, immediately they left their nets and they followed him. But one of them, his name is Peter. Eventually, he became lost. And in the, the process of becoming a lost leader, here we find in Luke chapter 22, verse 54. Luke chapter 22, verse 54. Then took they him and led him and brought him into the high priest's house. And Peter followed afar off. Peter followed afar off. Peter, he was still following, but was following afar off. And you find that Peter eventually lost out. Because somebody asked him and said, you must be one of them. He said, no, I'm not. Another fellow found him and said, you are. Because your speech betrays you. No, I'm not. And another person also came and said, the, the, I did I see in the garden when they were taking him to betray him and to crucify him. I said, I am not. First, he followed the Lord intimately. Second, he followed the Lord afar off. And then he became lost. When I talk about being lost, what does that mean? A leader that loses, number one, his vision. A leader that loses his vision. When you came into the ministry, you had a dream. You had a goal. You had a destiny. You had something you were looking forward to. And do you remember when uh, M.B. Grant came to uh, this state here many, many years ago? Maybe you were there and you saw his dead now, M.B. Uh, 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 Grant, W.B. Uh, Grant, and you saw him. And then you said, I will be like that. Do you remember the year that he was one came to your city and he was ministering and you saw a large crowd and he was preaching to the people and people were being healed. There was something that said in your heart, I will be like that. Do you remember the international conference of went of evangelists, maybe in Amsterdam or somewhere, and you had those people, you saw those people, and you said, I will be so and so in Nigeria. You had a dream, you had a goal, you had a vision. And then after some time now, you've lost that mission. That's a lost leader. But the Lord will recover you even today. Yeah. Number two is the lost valor. The lost valor. You see, when a person has valor means boldness. It means bravery. It means fearlessness. And it means you have spirit. You have a strong mind. And you have the conquering spirit. But you know, when you first start in the ministry, you can confront anything and anyone. If they say that there's somebody possessed with evil spirit there, they say, let's go there. We'll cast him out. And then if they say that they don't plant church in this village, 
those people said there will not be a bible believing church a, a living church in their village you say that's where we're going to go and then you rallied all your team together and then you go there and true true you are able to establish your church over there but after many many years now after receiving many knocks had knocks in your life and then you had some disappointments and people were telling you you think you are bold you think you are courageous we'll show you and will bring you down that fire that is burning within you will put it up will quench it if you think that you can be another david today and you can conquer goliath we're going to subdue you after many disappointments and many things have happened you lost your valor you lost your fearlessness and you lost your boldness you lost your courage the lost valor and when you lose vision and you lose valor you are becoming a lost leader number three the lost value value is the words you put upon yourself value is the price you put upon yourself you remember when you were younger in the ministry or even if you are not in the ministry you are in a profession and uh, you are just coming out of school and when you came out of school and you saw the other people that were working you felt important and you felt i can do it you were like one boy i read about his name is john but he said um, you know they came to school the first day and when they came to school the first day the teacher said i am your teacher in this class this is my name and all of you i'll be teaching you and you know you are going to make it and then he said now that i've introduced myself to you as your teacher can you introduce yourself and you know one of them once stood up and said i am so and so and was looking down like this as if the teacher will swallow him up if he looked up at the teacher another one stood up and you know said i am such and such another one stood up and said i am a village girl i come from the village this is my first time of being in the city and i hope i'll be able to make it another one stood up and they said all they wanted to say and this boy when he came to his turn he said i am johnny and i'm smart because god made me because god did not make a dumb stupid fellow god made me i am smart and in this class i will succeed how do you introduce yourself do you say when you introduce yourself you know as we come to the break time i who are you i am pastor so and so you will not know the name of my church actually we are in a village somewhere and we're trying to survive good luck to you i am not trying to survive i am surviving and i can do all things through christ who strengthens me god has called you into the ministry you come with value the value you put upon yourself is the value that people will put upon you uh, when you go to the market and you say you want to buy something is the value that the seller puts on it that you will put on it if it says it's only 100 naira that's what you'll bring out but if another person puts a higher value it says this is i'm going to sell it and you say no it says uh -uh, go to the other place if you want to buy uh, you know made in taiwan you can go to the other place here the, the one i'm selling here is original i said my own is original so if you have taiwan product good luck to you but i know the one i have is what original. original the value you put on yourself is the value people will put upon you if you walk like uh, you know a nobody and you act like a nobody and you talk like a nobody and you minister like a nobody and you pray like a nobody and then you are saying well this person that is a sick now and this demon possessed satan will you please leave him alone he's a poor man and he's suffering eh satan why are you doing like this don't trouble us now that's the value you put upon yourself and satan he will know that you don't think you have any value but if you come and say i come in the name of jesus I said I come in the name of Jesus and you put a value upon yourself what he says I can do I can do when he says I can go I can go but you know Peter he lost his value a person that he should be saying when somebody said you are one of them he should have said yes of course I am one of them did you read my story I walked on water did you do that before and the pilot that is trying to judge jesus now did he do like that before i went to the mount of transgression you are saying I'm, of course i'm one of them i'm a disciple of jesus christ have you seen moses before i saw him have you seen elijah before i saw him if he put a good value upon himself that's the value they put upon him the lady will say he'll run to the point and say i saw somebody who saw moses 
I saw somebody who saw Elijah. I saw somebody who walked on water. Come and see him. And it will happen in your life in Jesus' name. Number four, lost vitality. And you see, Peter, he lost his vitality. That means his enthusiasm. That means his joy of living. Yeah, there is something that, that is in you. Energy, divine energy. When you are a real child of God, that divine energy is within you. The enthusiasm is within you, but he lost his vitality. And then number five, he lost, he lost his virtue. He lost his integrity. He lost his honesty. He lost his uprightness. He lost his righteousness. He lost his virtue. Number six, he lost his victory. He lost his victory. The victory that he used to have, he had lost it. And then, number seven, he lost his voice. I don't mean that he couldn't speak. When, what I mean by voice here is your right of speech. Your authority of speech. You know, whenever people are discussing, and then, uh, you know, somebody stands up, everybody looks that direction. And then you tell your neighbor, that man has a strong voice in our community. That man is a voice of the populace. Listen to him because he has a voice. But in the case of Peter, he lost his voice. And he lost the authority and the right to speak by what he did. He became a lost leader. Lost vision. Lost valor. Lost value. Lost vitality. Lost virtue. Lost victory. Lost voice. But the Lord recovered him. I said the Lord recovered him. And if you have lost out in your ministry and in your personal life, the Lord will recover you too in Jesus' name. In John, John chapter 21. John chapter 21. I'm reading from verse 19. John 21 verse 19. They speak he, signifying by what death he should glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he says unto him, follow me. The Lord recovered him. You know, he lost the first call. And the Lord was calling him back again, saying, follow me. And the Lord is renewing the call in your life again today. And you will follow the Lord. I said you will follow the Lord. Follow me. I come to point number two. Revelation for limited leaders. Revelation for limited leaders. I told you about these limited leaders. These limited leaders, what happened to them? In, in Matthew chapter 17. Matthew chapter 17, reading from verse 19. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could we not cast him out? We tried. We prayed. We used all the methods we had known. Why could we not cast him out? Obviously, those were limited leaders. But the Lord is about to give you a revelation. Everybody say revelation. I said say revelation. The Lord is about to give you revelation. You see, everyone in every one of us in our lives, there is a moment in your life when you feel limited as a leader. It may be that you are limited in yourself. Or you are limited, you have limited resources. Or it is that you think you have limited power. Or it is because you have limited workers, limited people to help you. And because of that, you think you are limited. So far you can go and no further. But the Lord is bringing revelation unto us. He tells us in verse 20, Jesus says unto them, Because of your unbelief, it is unbelief that normally, normally limits us. When you have unbelief, you'll be limited. But if you come to the Lord and you say, Lord, here am I. I open up myself unto you. And you will not allow unbelief in your life. You go all the limitation is going to be broken away. I say to be broken away. And there is a person that we called Jabez. He had limitation in his life. But you know, eventually, when he prayed to the Lord, that limitation was broken. And the Lord is telling you today, the limitation in your life will be taken away in Jesus' name. 
and then he said for verily I say unto you every time you see for verily I say unto you it means certainly I say unto you assuredly I say without any shadow of doubt I say unto you if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed ye shall say unto this mountain remove hands to yonder place and it shall remove I said it shall remove yeah. I said it shall remove yeah. and nothing shall be impossible unto you that is the revelation the Lord is giving to all people who have felt limited in the past. After this seminar together, your limitation is taken away. Yeah. Your boundary will be expanded. Yeah. And the places you couldn't go before, you will go there. The places you couldn't reach before, you will reach there. And all the people you couldn't touch before, you will touch them in Jesus' name. In Philippians chapter 4 verse 13. Revelation for limited leaders, Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Can you say that with me? I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. And you know, some people, the way they read that, they say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You know, when, when somebody says something that he doesn't believe, you know that he doesn't believe it. Let's say somebody tells me now, and he says, uh, Pastor Kumuyi, say that you're a woman. I said, say that you're a woman. You want me to say, I am a woman. Do I believe that in my heart? The way I say it will make you know that I don't believe it. But if you say, say you are a pastor, and then I stand up here, and I look at you face to face, eyeball to eyeball, and I say, I am a pastor. Praise the Lord. Now I want you to say, like you know you believe it, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You know, when you say something like that, you'll be put to test. And you will pass the test. Yeah. I said you will pass the test. Yeah. You know, sometimes when you say you can do all things through Christ, just so trying this year, and you didn't know the test was coming. I went to a particular place. I didn't know I was going for test. Because uh, they said, uh, you know, this great man of God was coming from uh, England, Win Lewis. And was to have a crusade at Ibada. And I said, I would like to listen to him. What a great privilege for me to listen to great men preaching. And then when I got there, the University of Ibada students who had invited him, they wanted me to sit on the platform. I said, that's good, because it will make me to see all the audience very well. And I sat down. I didn't fast. I didn't pray. I wasn't preaching. I, was, I came to listen like you came to listen, like we came to listen today. And then I said, then he gave a message and preached salvation message to them. And then after preaching salvation to them, the people wanted him, he is the international evangelist, they wanted him to pray for the sick. And so he said, now I've done my part. And uh, tonight, the person that will pray for the sick is Pastor Kumuyi sitting on the platform here. Amen. And he didn't tell me ahead of time so that I could go and gather my five stones and put my sling in my hand and throw it at a Goliath. And he didn't tell me in time so that I could say, Lord, have mercy on me today and glorify yourself. Just said, now you see everybody welcome him. And then I came there and I can do all things. I said, I can do all things. I said, you can do all things. And you know, I just immediately I struck the pulpit there, the Spirit of God struck me. And then I said, the blind man there, get up, raise up your hand. You are healed in Jesus' name, and the eyes got opened. And I said, the lame person there, get up, rise up and walk. And he began to walk, even though I was not prepared for that. It's coming to your turn. You will do it in Jesus' name. And now I give you the final point very quickly. And this is release of liberated leaders. You are released already. I said you are released already. The release of liberated leaders. If the sun shall set you free, you shall be free indeed. What is he releasing you to? Number one, he's releasing, he's releasing you to more ministry. After this seminar, you are released already. 
more ministry in your life. Number two, miracle ministry. You are released into miracle ministry. Number three, manifold, many-sided ministry. You have a colorful ministry. And then number four is the master's mandate. You are released by the master's mandate. And then number five, you are released to the Messiah's message. The message that you are going to carry. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. That message will have power in your mouth. Number six is releasing you to a new mission. A new mission. I don't mean that you are going to change the name of your mission or the name of your church or you are going to quit your denomination, but you have a new power. You will have a new anointing. You will have a new authority. And then number seven is releasing you into membership multiplication. Your church will grow. Your members will multiply. Stand up and be released into this new power. New authority. Stand up and be released. The Lord is releasing you now. You are no more a lost leader. You are no more a latent leader. And you are no more a limited leader. You have become a liberated leader. The Lord has liberated you. You are free. I said you are free. I said you are free. I release you in Jesus' name. Raise up your hand for your anointing. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for all my brothers and all my sisters here, a new anointing, a new power, a powerful anointing, a mighty anointing will come upon every one of them in Jesus' name. I break every yoke in your life. I remove every limitation in your life. And I release it to a greater ministry. You will walk, you will not be tired. You will run, you will not faint. And the work of the Lord will prosper in your hand in Jesus' name. From today, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Oh Lord God of heaven, confirm it in every life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Put your hands together like ministers. God bless you.